Yes, I've already done this before, but the new Escape the Backrooms update has inspired me to do it again. I put an update tag on the last video to let all you know that the video is an old version and this is an update version. Now the rankings will change since I have played this game a bit more, so I do have now different opinions on certain levels. And now, let's begin the list with the worst level. Number 19, level 188. Number 18, level 9223372036854767 Level... I'm not saying that number again. It is well, not on the wiki, and its only source of information is basically YouTube. The level is one infinite staircase that is meant to be the final level of the back rooms. In the game, it portrays a portal to level 94, which is called Motion. The level is very lackluster, and all you do is go up some stairs until you reach the floor that is titled 94. Number 17, Pipe Dreams. Pipe Dreams is supposed to be a class 2 difficulty level that contains long maintenance hallways of pipes. In this game, there's only one long hallway which takes you to either the electrical station or level fun. There is only one entity, which is the Smiler, and it doesn't really appear once you get closer to your destination. This level would be higher up on the list if it wasn't a mindless walking simulator. Number 16, Level the End. Level the End is one of the most annoying levels in the game. And no, the nerf didn't do anything to the Scratcher's blind AI. Level the end in the original wiki, not the game wiki, is supposed to be a class alpha level, which means it doesn't really have much information on where to categorize the level. In Escape the Backrooms, it's clear that there is an entity, and it likes to camp and delete your progress when you're near completing the level. <laughs> the Scratcher's easily the worst entity in the game so far. Number 15, Level Fun. Level Fun is a very simple level to complete and escape the back rooms. I put this very low on the list, mostly because I wasn't very fond of the environment. The walls don't really bring lots of fun into the level. I wish you had different colors and had different areas like a play area or themed party rooms, anything that will make level fun feel like a place you would want to have your birthday in. I do however like the party goers overhaul model. It's the best adaptation of the party goers. Number 14. The cave system. The cave system is supposed to be a classified difficulty level, which is basically one large and very dark cavern with a bunch of entities in them. However, the level was missing its main entity, the arachnids of level 8, which I consider a sin because the caves aren't complete without the arachnids of level 8. The level in the game only has two enemies, which are the death moths and very speedy skin stealers, who are absolutely annoying in this level. <laughs> Overall, the level has potential. I just really wish those spiders had to park the planet. Number 13, Motion. Motion, which is also known as Level 94, is a class 3 difficulty level, which is a large neighborhood filled with the same house structure that looks like it was just copy and pasted. At the end, there is a floating castle. Inside it, there is a being known as the Animated King, which just to reject the concept of Pennywise the Clown. In Escape the Backrooms, however, Level 94 is yet another walking simulator, but this time, the level forces you to hide in a house when it turns dark, because at night, these things called animations will attack you if you're not hiding in a house in time. The first part of the level itself feels very long, and the second part, which is inside the castle of the level, is much shorter, but the boss round feels like a waiting simulator with a dash of anxiety mixed with it. Now, there's nothing wrong with the anxiety part, I just wish the boss fight wasn't bugged out in this update. Number 12, The Lobby. Now, I'm not gonna go too deep into detail with this level since we've all seen this level many times before. The lobby, or level 0, is the first level you enter in the back rooms. In the game, you're tasked to find a key that will open the door to a route to the habitable zone. Later in your level, a howler will spawn, and you do not want to be in this level for too long, even though there's an achievement for sitting in this level for 15 minutes. Now, this is the first level of the game, so I can't be too harsh on it. 
So we're just gonna get to the next level on the list. Number 11, the pool rooms. The pool rooms is the second most popular level of the back rooms, and its real name happens to be called Slumlimity. The pool rooms is a class zero level, which resembles a pool-like dimension, where it is likely the most relaxing place in the back rooms. There is no entities in this level, and but there are however dark areas, which you should avoid at all costs. In Skip the Back Rooms, the pool rooms don't have the same feeling as the actual concept of the pool rooms. It might be because of the lighting, or the level is very short and it needs to be longer, but I do hope the pool rooms get an update in the future specifically for improvements. Number 10, the Terror Hotel and its boiler rooms. The Terror Hotel is a classified which is a huge luxurious hotel complex with various rooms such as ballrooms, guest rooms, and even dining areas. The place is meant to drain your sanity down a lot. Now in Skate the Back Rooms, there are three parts to this level. The first part involves collecting moth jelly and putting it inside the mini elevator which will later grant you a key, which isn't all that bad. The second part is a floor of hotel rooms which you need to grab paper slips and put inside these lockers, which is the most annoying part of the level since they don't save every time you die. The last part is the boiler rooms, and I really hope you memorize the path, because it is easy to get lost in this maze, especially when you got death mobs down there. If you do have the path memorized like me, then this part shouldn't be that bad. Number 9, the Habitable Zone. The Habitable Zone is the second level of the back rooms, both in general and in the game. It's a class 1 difficulty level, which looks like a parking garage of some sort, and it has entities such as skin sealers and spinalers roaming around. The wiki did say there were hounds and scratchers, but to balance the game out, I can understand why Fancy decided to pick the Smilers over the worst entity in the game. The level is very basic, and can get old over time since this is the second level of the game. But overall, it is enjoyable, and I have to say my favorite part of the level is the flickering light section. Number 8, Water Damage. Water damage is the first ever sub-level to ever make it into Skip the Back Rooms. Now, people can make arguments at me and say, That's not a sub-level, it's actually part of level 188. But I did do the research, and I can say it's not level 188. Water damage is a class 2 difficulty level, which is basically a worn down version of level 0. In the game, you have to pull down 4 levers, which might seem simple enough, but they have a timer. And that timer goes down really fast in multiplayer mode, which is kind of a bit annoying, especially when there's a howler wandering around the area. <laughs> However, before you do all that, you have to navigate a maze, which is kind of hard since you don't know if you're going the right way until you enter halfway through the maze. Number 7. The Darkened Suburbs and the Abandoned Outpost. This is probably the longest level in the entire game. The Darkened Suburbs is a classified difficulty level which resembles a dark, empty neighborhood, but it's not really empty since there's something called the Neighborhood Watch, which is basically a giant walking eyeball that watches the neighborhood for outsiders. The level contains other side entities like hounds, wretches, and possibly skin sealers. However, the game couldn't contain that amount of entities, so Fancy chose wretches, which will bonk you on the head if you dare to trespass. <laughs> You however do need to trespass because you need to hack their computers in order to open a gate that will lead you into the abandoned outpost. Now the game Now the game does explain what to do in the abandoned outpost, but what it doesn't tell you is you need to backtrack in order to get to the next level, which is pretty annoying since on day one you're just looking around the station looking for an exit that doesn't exist. Number six, level run for your life. Level run for your life is literally in the title. You're actually running for your life. The problem with this chase is that it feels a bit too short. I mean, it would be really cool if you had to turn into different hallways containing multiple objects you had to avoid. Now, the main concept is technically a straight hallway with nothing stopping you, but I just feel like it would be nice to have a little bit of originality in this level. Though, I do like the feeling when you're almost at the end, when the entities are a bit close to you. Number 5, Thalassophobia. Thalassophobia is really supposed to be a class 4 difficulty level, but instead, it feels like a class 1 level with the thing in level 7 doing nothing instead of existing during the cutscene. However, the reason I put Slassophobia at number 5 is because I love the fact the level makes you think that something could attack you from the water, while under it or above it. 
I believe the reason this level has no enemies is because it's trying to give off that fear energy, just like the game The Complex did. The Lessophobia is a really great concept, and I see potential in this level. I just wish the thing in level 7 was an actual threat. Number 4, The Abandoned Office. The Abandoned Office is a class 1 difficulty level, which makes sense, since in the game, it's usually used for stocking up on almond water, juice, and snack bars, and other various things. But you do need to complete the electrical station in order to enter the level for the very first time, if you want to unlock it. Once you unlock it, go find the hub door and go through it, and go through it again to unlock it permanently. The level contains no entities, since why would you want a hound coming at you while you're going through the camera maze? Number 3, The Electrical Station. The Electrical Station is a class 4 difficulty level that is by far the most engaging level in Escape the Backrooms. I mean, you're actually doing tasks on that level while trying to fight the hounds roaming around the station. However, the wiki did say that there are many entities that you could encounter, but since this is the fourth level of this video game, Fancy thought it would be a great level to introduce the hounds, which are these very ugly looking dogs that will make these very annoying sounds. <laughs> They're not as bad to survive against, unless you are in nightmare mode, but other than that, the electrical station is a very fun and engaging level, which is why it's at number 3. Number 2, Lights Out. Now, I'm probably one of the few people who enjoys Lights Out. Others complain that the level is too difficult in a not so fun way. For me, I find the glow dots that the lighter scanner makes very satisfying, including the sound it makes. The lighter scanner is my favorite item in the game. I just love the way it works. It's undetermined what class difficulty Lights Out falls under, but in the game, you do lose sanity, and there's at least one entity huh? roaming around, but it don't become a larger threat until the suburbs level. Number 1. The Field of Wheat The Field of Wheat has gotten a ton of nerfs ever since the launch. The Field of Wheat is now my new favorite level to skate the back rooms. It used to be a class 1 difficulty, but not at the article's archive. The Field of Wheat in this game has its own concept. The original concept had a town in it. Instead of finding a town, you'll find an arcade at the end which happens to be level 3999. But I do find it a bit funny that you got an adult faceling who is supposed to be friendly to people. I do love the unsettling atmosphere and the fog that the level contains that captures the true horror experience of running into a field of props while getting chased by an insane guy with no face who's carrying a chainsaw. <laughs> And that is my update base list of Escape the Backrooms levels ranked worst to best. That is all today. Bye.